The graphical display Doppler has the facility to show the baseline heart rate, the acceleration, and to show the fetal movements. So that way we capture the health of the baby in a very short time. Technology's delivered a way to monitor the health of an unborn baby quickly and efficiently. I'm listening for the baby's fetal heart rate. It's a massive sigh of relief. Hearing their heartbeat, you just know straight away they're there, they're all right. I've got an anterior placenta, so I don't feel the movements as much as I normally would. A Doppler is something that midwives use every day of their life. It's our one piece of equipment we wouldn't be without, you know. A pair of gloves and a Doppler and we'll go anywhere. Traditionally, midwives have monitored a fetal heart rate at key stages in the delivery of a baby. Sounds like a galloping horse versus the heartbeat. If there's a clicking sound, like tap tap or lub lub, that means it is based on the baby's valves. But if it is shh, shh, like a shoeful, we call it, then it's the fetal vessels. But if it is very slow, shh, 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 that means it's a maternal vessel that's slow, but also has a flow pattern. I've been having a bit of reduced movement and I'm due in a week's time, so it's just, just a checkup, really, just to make sure everything's fine. Millions of women throughout the world are monitored by auscultation, and the traditional teaching has been you listen to the baby and write a rate. But this traditional practice is prone to significant error and may not represent baseline rate. A Doppler without a graphical trace display also has its drawbacks. It'll give you 140, 136, 150, so it's difficult to stabilize. So what people tend to do is actually to look at the number which is appearing most commonly and take that as the rate. But when you have a graphical display, then you know what the rate is across, and you can see the accelerations or decelerations as well. Compared with traditional techniques, a Doppler with a graphical display can reveal what happens in between your measurements, and it's more accurate the big numbers are the baby's heart rate. So what we would look for then is variation. If the baby moved, we'd expect to see an acceleration in the heart rate. The trace can be saved to the patient's records and provides objective evidence of the examination. We use them for that initial assessment and then once a woman's established in labour, we use it every 15 minutes and then once they um, come to the stage where they're actively pushing for labour, we use it um, a bit more frequently, about every five minutes. It's common for a deceleration to take place during a contraction. If I draw a vertical line at the beginning and a vertical line at the end of the contraction, the deceleration will be there. It's a sign of distress if a deceleration takes place after a contraction. That's why we say listen soon after a contraction. The issue is actually when it gets longer and longer, so there's not enough oxygen coming to the baby. This is the worst case scenario, where a baby is in extreme distress. This is what we call as a pre-terminal trace, with a few more contractions, with the oxygen running out, suddenly the baby will plummet down and will be a stillbirth. So if they can intervene much earlier, then there's a good chance they might be able to recover the baby and the baby will be in good health. So it's quite important that they don't miss out. These are the cases where the midwife says, I heard it 140, 140, 140. Now I can't hear. So the is pretty essential for the routine care that we provide, yeah. Less stress is good for everybody, <laughs> including me. <laughs> if I have a limited amount of money, then I can use one of these small machines, Dopplers, and monitor the whole labor. So you will have more babies who are alive, more babies in good condition. We like to see everything with a happy ending. So that's reassurance and I would say it's a hallmark of fetal health.